Hi, my name is John Pratchett and in this video I'm going to talk to you about how I use PowerPoint controlled by a remote presenter with my vMix productions. So first up, please subscribe to this channel if you find the content that I'm putting out of use to you. And don't forget you can always ask questions in the comments below as well. So let's move on to what we're going to talk about today. You've all, I'm sure, been in the position where you've had a remote presenter uh, coming into your vMix uh, session, whether it's for live or pre-recorded, and they have a PowerPoint presentation that they want to show at the same time. There are many ways that we can uh, bring the PowerPoint feed into our vMix session. Uh, one is you could have them uh, share their screen and bring it in that way. Um, if you're on a Windows or they're on a Windows machine, they can do the PowerPoint remote presentation, which brings it into a website, and you can pull that website into vMix. And they're all OK. They require quite a bit of work in a way for the presenter. Uh, do they have an extra laptop for it? That sort of thing. Uh, and the quality is reduced, especially if you're coming through screen sharing. Um, and if you're doing it through the remote web presenting way, then you can't get a lot of the animations. You certainly can't do video and sound and things very well through that. Uh, and if, if you're on a Mac with PowerPoint, you can't do it at all. So the ideal would be to have your PowerPoint sitting with you here in your studio um, and then have your presenter remote control that PowerPoint from where they're sitting, wherever they are in the world, and still be able to see uh, what slide they're on, what's coming up next, for example. So let me show you how I'm going to do that in my studio. Let's have a look at the overhead camera. So here I am, just to give you a quick uh, overview of what we're going to be doing. Obviously, I have my vMix system here, which is a vMix cut system, I call it. Uh, so my feed's coming in here. Uh, we would have a vMix call running with our presenter's camera on. Let's say, look, you can see me there. Let's say that's it. Um, and I've got a Windows uh, machine here that is running PowerPoint. So nothing special about that. That's a Windows machine running PowerPoint. Um, what we need to do, obviously, first of all, is get the PowerPoint feed from here into here. And uh, the way we can do that, let me just uh, cut back to this camera, is uh, we can use NDI tools. So NDI tools come with a, uh, a little application called Scan Converter. I think, actually, they've just changed the name of it. It's in NDI tools. If you run that on your computer, then the screens appear as a feed in vMix. You can choose them from adding an NDI input. So if you had two screens, two screens uh, attached, then you can have one, for example, here it is. This one here is showing the presenter's view. And you could have another screen that's just showing the output. Uh, you can't see the output here on my system because I use a NewTek Spark. Um, and that is a HDMI to NDI converter that's plugged into this machine. And what that does is just converts the second output straight into NDI, uh, and I can just bring it back in. But the screen here, this one here, is uh, being presented on NDI just using the NewTek scan converter. So once that's there, then of course, here we go, we can bring them into our vMix system. So look, here we go, we've got. Um, PowerPoint slide, that's the feed coming in from the new tech Spark. And then we have our uh, presenter view, which is coming in via the uh, scan converter from uh, NDI Tools. It's, uh, it looks a funny aspect ratio because it's a widescreen, extra widescreen monitor. So it comes in like that at the moment. Uh, I could change that around if we wanted to, but works fine for what we're doing here. So we have our feeds coming into vMix all well and good, and then we can do whatever we want to do with them. We can create our nice picture in pictures and things like that. Um, obviously, you want to send something back to your uh, participant, our, our person who's actually talking over these slides. They need to be able to see what they're talking about. So I would uh, probably send something back very similar to that. That's a very basic layout. You can see that we've got our presenter view. And in the bottom right corner, let's say that's our TX return. Um, so as you look over there, there we go, that, that monitor there is whatever would be going out for TX. And uh, for, so, for example, if I was to say, oh, look, now we go, we're on PowerPoint there, and now we're back to a camera feed there. Um, 
so that's all well and good. Some people don't want to see a uh, the presenter notes. They might just want to see the actual slide. So we can do a return, you know, similar to that. So again, there's a TX over there. You wouldn't see me. It'd be something more like that. And uh, so you can send that back to them, whichever way you want to send that back to them, uh, whether it's directly back through. If it's a vMix call, and you're obviously just sending it straight back to them on vMix call. So that's great. So we've got their PowerPoint in, we've got them in, uh, we've created all our fantastically looking scenes that we want to send out for our TX and we've created a return feed back to our presenter. The only problem is they're over there somewhere out the way, miles away, other side of the world, and uh, how are they going to control moving their slides on? Now you can either go the BBC governmental way that they seem to do it here, which is next slide, please. I wouldn't say it's BBC, it's the government. Um, whenever they do a presentation, they always seem to say next slide, please, which I kind of don't understand why they're doing that, but you could do that. Or we could give control of the slides to our presenter. So that's what I do. And let me show you how I do that. If I flick over to uh, my other screen here, let me just do that. Here we go. So screen two, this one here. So. Um, I use a piece of software called Internet Clicker. Some of you would have heard of it and they've gone, ah, oh, I use Internet Clicker. So yeah, I use Internet Clicker. And what this is, is a piece of software. Uh, you sign up to this, so you have various levels of account. I think there's two levels. Um, and if you install this on the laptop that's got PowerPoint, it allows you to send a URL to your uh, participant and from there, they can control the PowerPoint. So let me quickly show you that. If I go over to my, so here is my uh, PowerPoint machine. Let's just exit out of this. There we go. Um, so Internet Click comes with an application that you can install on PowerPoint as a plugin. Um, it also has a standalone application, so you can use it with other programs as well. But in this instance, let's look at the nice little PowerPoint plugin they have. So here it is. You, open it here, click on settings, and it asks you for a key, which I've blurred out, which is my unique key for my account, and then a code. Uh, here is, I've just put click demo in, you then click on connect, and you are connected up to your uh, internet clicker account. Uh, you've got little options at the bottom here. These are really cool ones, especially at the bottom, send slide thumbnails and send speaker notes. I also want it to automatically connect and keep on top. So once you, I tick all these, Click on connect with a, uh, a code, make sure that's nice and unique, and then click on close. This That's now set up. Once ever you open PowerPoint now, that will automatically connect up to your internet clicker account. So let's run this presentation. There we go. And uh, let's cut back to our screen two. Here we go. So um, in internet clicker, we can go into our control center. So I've, here we go, we've got click demo is set up. It's seen that there's a connection there. We click into that. And this is our control center where we can control various things with Internet Clicker. As far as the presenter goes, uh, all we need to do is say to him, go to internetclicker.com and type in, and this is the code that you initially put in. So I put in click demo, click, you could spell, be nice, wouldn't it? Click demo and hit submit. This is asking for my name. I'll explain why in a second. So I'll put John and I'll click OK. And here we go. This is what you get. Um, so it's just a web interface. And as you can see, top left hand corner, it is saying clicking disabled. The reason being, let's just go uh, full screen on this, shall we? There we go. Nice. Um, and reason being is that under the control, this is the control panel, uh, I have enabled control presenter access. So every time you send this out to somebody, we'll ask them for a name and they will appear. As you can see, John has appeared here. Uh, and then I can enable and disable their access to Internet Clicker. So if you have multiple um, presenters, one after the other, you don't want one accidentally moving another presenter's uh, PowerPoint on. That would be bad. Um, so you can uh, disable them in here. And then when you want to, you can enable. So for example, here I have John. So let's enable that. And I also have an iPad. iPad looks like this. There we go. That's the iPad. Um, and that's logged in. So I, as you can see, that says internet click dis or clicking disabled, top left hand corner of that iPad. If I suddenly enable that iPad, it will disappear. Boom. So now let's flick back 
to here. So we've enabled that and our presenter will now be presented with this. You notice that little click disabled has disappeared. So now all they need to do is, let's go to a two-pip. Here we go. On the left is the slide coming out of my PowerPoint presentation and on the right is just showing you the internet clicker interface that the presenter sees. So when they click on here, the next slide, boom, the next slide moves along. And as you'll notice, it also gives the presenter a little thumbnail of the completed slide. It won't show builds or anything, but it shows the slide that they're currently on as well. So even if the return feed somehow fails, they've got some idea of which slide they're on and that's always there. So if I move on to the next slide, you'll see slide three has come in on the left-hand side and slide three is showing up on their current slide. If they wanted to go back, they would click on here. And it's exactly the same if you're on an iPad. Here we are on the iPad. If I click next here, boom, you can see it moves up slide four, back slide three, slide two, slide one. Um, and that's it. They are now controlling. Here we go. I'll do, I'm pressing the iPad here. You can see the bottom right corner. There we go. Move up slide three. So if they had a presenter view like that, they can see exactly what's going on. So let's move back to uh, the screen and show you some other things that we can do with Internet Clicker. Here we go. Um, a lot of the time they say they want to speak for, let's say, 15 minutes. We can give them a timer. So let's say 15 minutes timer and then click Start Timer. Let's have a look at what they would be seeing. If you notice in the top there, there is a little countdown timer. And uh, that will also be showing in the iPad as well. For example, it looks like that. There's the countdown timer. So they can get some idea of how long they've got left. You can pause that as well if you want to. Uh, you'll also notice, I'll keep showing on the iPad here at the moment, there's a little, at the top here, there's a little uh, cog. If I click that, I can choose to keep screen awake. That option there is particularly good on iPads and Android devices to stop them going to sleep. Certainly works nearly all the time on an iPad, uh, sorry, an uh, Android device, not necessarily always on an iPad. It depends on how security has been set up, especially with corporate phones, for example. Um, so let's just go back to screen, this screen here. One of the other options you've got on here is we can show speaker notes. If I do this, just move that way, you'll see the format changes slightly. I've still got my left and right, still got my slide, but here in this gap here, if we had speaker notes for that particular slide, that would also be shown there, which is very cool, especially guys, you've got some people that do like to have their speaker notes. And um, that comes in very handy. That's a reasonable, recent, reasonably recent addition to it, so definitely worth looking at. Um, back to here to the control. So here's my time. If I wanted to pause it, I could pause it. Another thing I can do at the bottom here is send some messages. Hello from John. If I put that, let's have a look at my iPad. There you go. Hello from John has popped up, and I can just touch it to get rid of so you can send little messages like you're moving too, speaking too fast for example and things like that um, again I'm going through this really quickly just some other things you can do on here um, we have a launch queue light which basically launches a website that um, when they click sends you a beep like that and a green flashing light so if you wanted to see when they've clicked it you can do uh, I tend not to use that because I basically can see when they clicked it because the slides move forwards um, Another thing we can do is you can actually embed your internet clicker as an iframe if you're creating a custom website. That's uh, that's quite nice. And um, you can also send out a custom URL to them uh, with their name that automatically logs in them logs them in as their name, um, which is also worth doing as well. Uh, so you can set all this up beforehand for them. So I'm not sponsored by Internet Clicker. There are other similar applications out there, so hunt around to see what works for you. But I do get on well with Internet Clicker, and it works fantastically for me. And uh, the presenters love it, the fact they can just go to their phone, type in uh, the, a URL very quickly, and off you go. Um, if that has been of use to you, then please subscribe. Any questions, put them down in the comments. I will be putting out videos regularly, so uh, make sure that bell is uh, ticked as well. So that was how I use PowerPoint with vMix. Uh, hope it was of use and thank you for watching.